Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Good evening. Welcome back to another session of uh, from Beating Hearts, a webinar with Dr. Low. Uh, this is, I think, our first session on obstetric and gynecology. Uh, more obstetric today, of course. Uh, and Happy New Year to all. Hopefully, we can put the 2020 behind us and have a better year. Uh, and then uh, continue our continuous medical education and improving ourselves. And of course, um, let's hope that uh, the vaccine will come about and make our life back to normal. Um, I'm hopeful and I'm sure all of you should be optimistic. So let us not waste any more time. And then we welcome yes. Dr. Lo. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So good evening, everyone. So like I said, I repeat again what uh, I mentioned just now uh, before the new people are coming in. So this interact this session is actually I'm making it uh, a bit more interactive than the usual, okay? And then uh, the title that I have for everyone is top ten reflects all doctors must have in obstetric emergencies, okay? And before I start, just a bit of uh, introduction to myself, okay? Uh, my name is Lo. My name is surname is Lo. My name is Kapin. Okay, okay. I'm from Penang, but I'm not. I'm not related to Jolo. Okay, although he's from Penang as well, and I'm working now in this hospital. Uh, Lo Guan Lai is a family hospital started by doc Dr. Lo Guan Lai, which is a GP, and then um, his son and uh, his grandson, uh, my colleagues, uh, they are still uh, working obstetric gynecologist. Okay, all right. So everyone can hear me. If you can hear me, you, I mean, type something in the comment. Yes. All right. And I'll proceed. Okay. So, um, oh, great, great. Okay. So only Betty couldn't hear me well. Like everyone is hearing me fine now. Nah. All right. Okay. So, all right. So the first thing I want to tell you is uh, actually the title that I want to have for this web is these are the titles I want to put inside. <laughs> Just that uh, Betty said that, wow, this is too fancy. Maybe you guys won't understand <laughs> what I want to portray, okay? But basically, um, this is what I want to tell you guys. This is not a session to tell you guys what you can get from your books. If, you, if I'm not telling you something that you can get from your books, you might as well spend the night reading your books and not listen to me, okay? What I'm going to tell you is this uh, 10 reflex that you can try to learn up and practice and maybe uh, go through to yourself that you need to know when you face with anything that is uh, we consider as emergency, emergency in a labor room or delivery childbirth, okay? So I want everyone to have all this mindset that all these things are unexpected, but make the unexpected becomes expected. It's like, okay, so you see this uh, obstetric emergency called prolapse, all right? Is it expected? Is it unexpected? It's supposed to be unexpected, but then it has become expected. You have a patient pregnant. If she comes, there's always a risk of cord prolapse. And then you don't go like so panicky that you really shit breaks and don't know what to do and you just freeze, okay? So the worst thing is to freeze, okay? All right, so the first question I'm going to ask the audience today is, um, who of you guys haven't been to the labor ward yet? Okay, who have been to labor ward? Please type in labor, labor. Are you guys sleeping? <laughs> all right, all right. So everyone been to labor room? Okay, great, great. Okay, so quite a few, all right. Uh, how many we have here, uh, Betty? Oh, now I can't hear Betty pula. I, I, Betty, do you mute yourself? I don't know. Right. Can you hear me now? Ah, yeah, I can hear you now. All right. Okay. How many person we have here now? Oh, uh, quite a we lot. Have we have 73. Oh, 73. Great, great. That's a good number. All right. Now we try to go for 88, okay? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good number as well. Okay. So since a lot of people uh, have been to labor rooms, so this would be a very interesting session for you guys because I can ask you guys some question and ask, maybe you guys can also ask me back some question about what you have encountered. Okay, so there's a few key principles when you have uh, emergency. 
there's no absolute right or wrong in emergency. The first thing you do is don't judge. Let's say you have emergency, uh, someone do something, you don't say, oh, this one is wrong. This one is uh, bad or anything. The only thing wrong is, you know this emergency, you ran away. Okay? <laughs> Running away is definitely wrong. But if you do okay. something, I mean, you will be not 100% correct, okay? But at least there is some amount of correctness in that. But the main thing is don't judge. It's just like, later, let's, later I'll tell you like, okay, maybe uh, you have a shoulder dystocia. The first thing you must do is, uh, the famous one is the McRobert, then the superpyric pressure. So some person, suddenly they forgot about this McRobert, they just do superpyric pressure. Is that wrong? That's not wrong, okay? So don't judge, all right? The second thing is practice makes perfect. What it means by practice is like you must encounter more emergency, then you get used to the you get used to the, the, the emergency. So you you will be like, okay, I seen so many core prolapse, so I know how to handle core prolapse. But how to do that mainly is your time. Means that let's say you are a junior doctor, you have a shift. This shift you are only there then you don't encounter any emergency. Then the other shift, you want to go back and rest. Can you go back and rest? And then if you think you have free time, you have extra time, you can come to visit labor room and just see, just in case there are emergency. But of course, if you're not your shift, please don't go to labor room and say, oh, I pray for emergency, I pray for emergency. <laughs> okay, then people will really kill you, all right? Okay, so these are things that I would do last time when I was a junior doctor. I said, oh, I want to know more about emergency. So I just go there. And of course, you liars with your uh, friend. It's like, uh, if you have any emergency or what, you can, uh, I mean, call me up or then, or you can stand by and you can just help out. And then if let's say there's emergency, you can, uh, you, you maybe you're not the first person there, you're the another person with you because you're not on duty. So at least you have something that uh, you can help out and then you can learn from that. The third thing is uh, moderation is the key, okay? Why I say the third thing is a key is because don't be a hero, okay? Because oh. later I will tell you about the first reflex that you okay. must know, person, okay? Person, and then also second thing is don't be a pussy, okay? Don't run away. If you know there's an emergency, don't run away. Stay uh, with the patient, me, okay? Um, yes? Excuse me, I'd like to apologize for Dr. Lo Kaping's, um Sexist uh, words, use of words here. Language. <laughs> oh, alright, sorry, uh, sorry. Excuse me. Okay, sorry. Okay. Later, I change, I change. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, I mean, I mean, the man don't be able to see. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So the next thing I want to tell you is, okay. So this talk is basically for junior doctors. Uh, mean what you can use when your senior doctors are busy. Example of busy is like, you know, when uh, some of your medical officer are in operation theater, they are unable to attend to the patient or they are busy with something else. Uh, <laughs> like for me, last time when I was a house officer, my MO would tell me, you when you call me, you better have a good reason to call me. So it's like, well, okay. <laughs> So whenever you have something to call your MO or medical officer, make sure that you have really good, I mean, you are really uh, need to call him or her. Second thing is maybe you are in a land far, far away, meaning that um, when uh, you guys are junior, sometimes when you become junior medical officer, you are posted to a district hospital and then your main hospital is like half an hour, one hour, two hour, or three hours away, and you have an emergency, these are the things that you can do before you send the patient to the hospital. And third thing is when you encounter childbirth in public places. For instance, suddenly you're a doctor, you go to watch movie, uh, and then your pregnant lady watch it together with you, and suddenly the movie very exciting, and then suddenly you need to deliver uh, baby, I mean, the, no, no, you, sorry. You need to conduct a delivery. Then suddenly, there's some emergency that, I mean, some uh, complication that you need to handle. So if you're a doctor, this is the thing that you need to know. What are the reflexes you need to be, okay? For instance, if you're in cinema, airplane, or ferry, or Penang, okay? 
So far, anyone has uh, any experience of uh, seeing a childbirth in public places? If you have, you type yes. If no, you say no. Anyone? No? No. No, okay. So, very, very lucky bunch of guys. <laughs> All right. So, have you guys, anyone have handled emergency when your senior doctors are busy? Oh, yes. There's someone said yes. Vijaya Kushare. She has? Oh, my God. Is this a yes to second question or yes to the first question? Serena said. Serena said yes. Oh, oh ambulance. Yes. Okay, yeah, okay. Ambulance. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> so, so, was it uh, uneventful or eventful? Vijaya? Uh, is it how to pronounce your name? V I D Y A. Uneventful. Okay, oh. that's good. Mental fun. Usually, ninety percent of time is uneventful. There won't be any complication. All right. Only sometimes ten percent. Even ten percent are mild complication, and then one percent will be the one with very heavy complication. Okay. But Serena said that it is hers was eventful when she. Saw somebody. Oh, okay. You want to type something to tell us what was yeah, the. Elaborate later. Oh. Yeah. Oh, landed up in a scissor. So, what was the emergency you have? Yeah. Yeah. Serena can type in the comment section. Ah, cop collapse. Okay, okay. So, this is something that's expected as well. All right. So, later I will talk more about cop collapse. Okay. All right. So the first reflex that everyone must have is what? Do you, do you guys want to guess what is the first reflex? This time I've given you guys a very good tips. Calm, all right. Okay, that is a reflex. Don't run away. Yes, excellent. <laughs> okay, Serena, you are right. It's call for help, okay? So usually this is actually a basic thing. Even when I go for post-grad exam in our OSCE or anything, the first thing we do is to call for help. If you fail to call for help, you fail. Because that is the first thing. Okay? So it's not just ask for help. You must shout for help. Okay? So for you guys who are some, some guys or ladies who are very, very polite, you all speak very soft. If you go to the labor room, you must learn to project your voice. Okay? Go in the room and shout, help, help. Okay? You must practice, maybe practice in your dorm so that you your voice is loud enough. Because honestly, I've seen many house officers before and there are, there are house officers that they just couldn't shout. Even when they shout, help is not loud enough, okay? So you must learn how to shout loud enough, but not too, like, too, what did I say? Not to sound too panicky. It's like you ask for help, it's like, Help, I need help. Then you must tell what is the reason that you need help. Is it called prolapse? Is it PPH? And you must be very clear so that everyone can come. All right. And if you if you guys know, there's the thing mechanism in our Malaysian hospital. Whenever there's an emergency in labor room, there's one color alert that we trigger. Do you know about this color alert? If you know, type, all right, NRHH. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but the initial is NISH. You are right, it's red alert. Okay, so this red alert, everyone must know. Okay, and every hospital will have this red alert. Basically, this red alert is like you call to the phone or you ask someone to call, it's a red alert, labor room six. Then the operator would call all the specialists, the NS and the pediatrician sometimes and they would need to come because there's a red alert. And of course, you must tell the operator what is the red alert about, okay? So basically, the first reflex is to call for help. And then these are the other reflexes that I've listed down, okay? First is for uterine atony. Second is for maternal collapse. Third is for genital tear, okay? Fourth is for uterine inversion. And then last one, the motif for mom, mom is a retained placenta, okay? And for the baby, there's four, okay? First one will be when the baby is born flat, means that it's atony. You can feel the tone is poor, okay? The apgar is poor. This is an emergency as well. 
second thing is a bridge. Okay, this bridge will be like usually you guys know what's bridge, right? It's like the baby's head is on top, and then the bodies is below, and when you come down, the head is being trapped by the cervix. Okay, later I will discuss more on this. D is of course what Serena had told us. It's called prolapse. And then the last one is shoulder dystocia, okay? Okay, so we go for the first one. The first reflex, when you guys have uterine atony, what do you all do? Massage, okay? So is it this kind of massage? Yes or no? Hello, you guys sleeping? Sleeping? <laughs> all right. Okay, so what massage is this? You guys know? No? Maybe Betty would know. Uh, it's a, is yes, this a Chinese thai massage? massage. Thai massage. Balinese or Thai? Yeah, this is Thai. Correct. Thai is where they bend, bend all the all your all your okay. So this is what we call as a uterine massage. Okay. So there's basically two. One is uh, internal, means that you put one fist inside the vagina, and another hand is to compress from the top. Okay, a lot of time, uh, people, a lot of time, doctors will just do this uh, external hand. External hand meaning that you just uh, grip the funders and they and they just squeeze, 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 squeeze on the fun, on the uterus and they use just the ex you can see the arrow in my screen. Can you all see? All right. Uh, so usually they just do the external massages from the top. Okay. So when you do the massage just from the top, it will contract as well. But if you can put another hand on the suprapubic to compress it, like the second picture with the green glove, it will be better because it's atony. So when you compress, it makes it uh, easier to contract plus the, the uterus will compress better. Okay, And then the bleeding will be less. And if you dare, I mean... If you really can do it, then you put another fist inside the vagina and then you compress the womb from uh, both, both area, okay? Because if you just do the massage from the top, there's no counter, there's no counter action, you understand? It's the same thing like the Thai massage, you see? The, the girl, the, the masseur is holding the, 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 the the customer, and then you can see the counter pressure is on the, the tie, so that both there's a pressure, okay? So there must be a pressure and a counter measure to make sure that the womb is contracted, okay? You're, you're okay, any questions so far? All right. So what are the medication that you all use that very commonly to treat this uh, atony? Do you guys know? You all can type in the chat. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Oxytocin. Oxytocin. Okay. Good. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So someone asked, "Ah, uh, Najiha, how long we should massage the uterus?" Okay. The answer is you massage it as long as possible until the bleeding stop or your help have arrived or the senior doctor have have come. Okay. All right, so we got a very good list of it. Oxytocin, oxytocin, uh, ergometrin, syndocinone, ergometrin. Okay, so the, the golden question would be, let's say you are in a cinema. Do you have oxytocin with you? Yes or no? Um, apa? Memory gland. No, no. Wow, so many no. All right. Uh, you try to mute and answer in the comment, please. All right, so many answer no, okay. Tapi dia pun bagi pip, bagi prejus. Sorry, ya. Can you all? Okay. All right, so the answer actually is uh, when you're in a cinema, you still have oxytocin. But the oxytocin is not exogenous. It's endogenous. Okay. So one of the things that survival is like, if you have uterine atony after massage, you actually can ask the mom, the mother itself to do a nipple stimulation. By stimulating the nipple, you can also release the 
endogenous oxytocin. And then, of course, if best, okay, all right, the best is, of course, you ask if the baby is uh, active, everything, you put the baby to the to the mother and let it breastfeed, okay? And then it will also, once the 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 baby uh, starts suckling on the nipple, it will also release oxytocin, okay? It's not, it's not my idea, huh? it's not my idea. <laughs> it's it's uh, already been there for some time, okay? These are actually from the handbook of uh, midwife, okay? Because midwife, sometimes they need to go to kampong and baby is delivered there. And then they don't have all this excess of oxytocin and everything. And then one of the things additional is to do a nipple stimulation. Usually it's by putting the baby to suck on the nipple. Okay, or you ask the mom to stimulate herself. All right, you don't stimulate for them. Okay, it would be very uh, not so appropriate. Okay, later you can ask Sue. Uh, don't, don't quote my name. Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, quote Betty's on, name. Quote, quote Betty's name. All right, okay. <laughs> Shall we, uh, any other question you guys want to ask before I go to the second, uh, sorry, one, two, three, the third, third reflex? No? Okay, if no question, I go to the next, all right? Okay. Okay, the third one reflex would be maternal collapse. So ABC, you guys know, right? Not I batu champo, huh? So <laughs> ABC is what? You guys can type in the comment section what do you think ABC is. Is it American born Chinese? Yeah, do you know what is ABC, guys? Come, I need to test you guys. Airway, breathing, circulation. This one I must com consult with Betty. Is that correct? Uh? Airway, <laughs> breathing, circulation. Oh, yeah, I think so. But the I think so. That one is her uh, 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 Not my, not my <laughs> All right, okay. Okay, you're right. Airway, breathing, circulation. But when the mom is pregnant, there's a slight modification. What modification we do is usually the mother we need to turn to a bit left lateral. All right. The reason is because after because the 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 the, the patient is uh, pregnant. Okay. So when you turn the baby slightly to the left, can you see the screen? There's uh this red circle and blue circle that I'm pointing to. Okay. So the red circle is the aorta. Okay. The vena cava is a blue circle. You can see when the baby is being slanted one side, the vessel become bigger. Okay. Main thing you want to increase the circulation. So PR is to what? In circulation to where? Is it to your body? No, it's to the brain. Okay. But to have enough blood going back to the heart to pump to the brain, you need to uh, put the mom 30 degree. So how to put that is you don't go and slant yourself because later you injure your own back. You just slip one blanket or pillow behind the back. Okay, so you reduce the compression for like the large vessel. Okay, this is one of the reflex. So if you see a mom suddenly collapse, okay, then you must quickly put in a put in this uh this uh blanket anything behind, and you see, and then you tip to the left, okay. Second thing is, of course, there's something that's extra. Uh, if you are still junior, you try not to do it. But if, let's say, your senior couldn't make it or you're in a public place, you're in district hospital, uh, we can consider do this perimortem cesarean delivery, meaning that you just cut the mother's tummy from the umbilicus down to suprapubic, and you can you see the uterus, and you slowly cut the uterus, and you take out the baby. Okay? The most... Uh, use. I mean the. I mean, uh, everyone have assisted Caesar before. How many have assisted Caesar before? Put there. Yes. Comment. Yes, please. All right. Quite a lot of doctors here. Yeah. So when you assist Caesar, is it bloody or non bloody? You can comment, please. Bloody or non bloody? Non bloody. Non bloody. Okay. Good. All right, it's, it's a full of blood, okay, because of the uterus, everything, okay. <laughs> but when you do a perimortem cesarean delivery, mainly because it's a maternal collapse, so um, the heart already stopped beating, all right. So usually, the general rule is you uh, wait for around five minutes and still you cannot revive the mother, then only five to, five to eight, then you do the perimortem cesarean delivery. So when you cut open, actually there is 
not much blood because the circulation has stopped. The circulation has stopped. Okay, so you must quickly take out the baby. Then you can continue with your CPR. Okay, one of the one of the one of the things that we can do the CPR is. Uh, have you seen this movie Matrix. before? The Matrix, all right? Where this uh, Neo put in the hand into the mother, into the, the ladies, and then pump pump the blood from the from the heart. Okay, this is something that you can do, which is a modified CPR, where you cut open the mother, you take out the baby, then you can see the tummy decompress. Then you actually can put a hand inside, and then you compress the heart pericardium from below the diaphragm. And you compress. Uh, okay, this is one of the way to do the CPR because when you do CPR, you are basically on external compression. But this one is virtually the whole hand there, and you just compress on the do the CPR from the heart. But this is very uncommon. Okay, so these are things that you can try to do if, let's say, you are really the senior couldn't make it. If not, you just keep to the first half, which is which is to tilt left and continue with uh, ABC. Okay, um, you guys, uh, any questions so far? No? Okay, I continue first, all right? Okay. Okay, so the next thing would be to have this uh, genital tears, okay? I think genital tears is very common. So a lot of times, um, doctors are like, wow, where is the tear? Is it very deep? I couldn't go in so deep. So. The first thing, the first one of the first reflex that I would I would tell you is that you can do this uh, anchoring, okay? Can you guys see the tear is here? Is that the epi tear here? Okay, and then you can see there's a blue line here. Okay, so every time when you suture the episiotomy, you were advised to suture from the tip, right? Correct, right? So if you cannot see the tip, what do you do? You go as deep as possible, and then you suture. You take a deep bite at the end and then you gently pull down the vaginal tissue until you can see the apex or the bleeder, then only you suture. All right. The main thing is because uh, vagina is uh, like a tunnel, so it's very deep. And sometimes when you shine your light in, you actually couldn't see inside. So what is the tip is you suture a big bite and then you drag, I mean drag the vagina tissue out a bit so that you can see and you and you do the other suturing to reduce the bleeding. So this is one thing. Okay, there's a question from Dr. Kaur. Cardiac massage through the abdomen, something new. You did that before? No, I never done that before because even perimortem cesarean section is very rare. Okay, I have only heard that people did the perimortem cesarean section before. Yep. Oh, I I'm so happy you've never done it before. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy myself I've never done it before. <laughs> but this is what uh been been written in a literature that you can do if in the in I mean in real emergency, all right? Where you do the external compression and then you already cut open perimortem, you can just do the internal one, which is more effective in uh in uh creating the the pump. Okay, all right. So yeah, okay. No, it's okay. If you don't dare, then you don't do it. Just continue on a conventional CPR. Okay. Okay. So we continue with our genital tears. Okay. So first thing is you can anchor from the inside and you pull it out and then you continue to suture so that you can visualize your tear better. Okay. And then the second thing will be to pack. So before your ammo arrive, if let's say you still, after suturing, still got bleeding, what you do is you just uh, pack the Pack the, the area that's bleeding. And if you want it to be more like we call watertight, you can use a glove, you put your gauze, do your like pack inside, and then you you put a pressure there. Okay, so that it, it can actually reduce slightly the, the bleeding. And then another thing is uh one of the medication that I'm not sure whether you guys have uh used in your labor room. Uh if you guys have this IV transamine, okay. IV transamine have been recognized to be reducing the bleeding. Okay, for instance, uh, they have used it in they have seen it in this army when they go for war. A lot of war they have uh, injury and they start bleeding. 
and when they give IV transamine, they actually reduce bleeding by 50%. So I think the latest, if not mistaken, the FICO, they actually made that like something that is compulsory that all the patient that deliver, if they have no, yes, it's trans uh, trans transamic acid. Yeah, correct. So this transamic acid is like, uh, once they deliver, they just give, unless patient have certain uh, clotting disorder or they have like previous stroke, so you can give transamine to reduce the bleeding, okay? So far in private uh, practice, I've used it for all my deliveries and actually it does reduce a lot of the bleeding, okay? Yes, is trans is uh, NRH is uh, trans transamine acid. acid. Okay? I also have yep. that problem okay. of pronouncing that word. But I want to add yeah. here about yes, transamic yes. acid. Uh, yep. Low dose of transamic acid actually reduce pigmentation on the face. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. It so it makes you reduce, more fairer. Yeah, right? That's right. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> but we don't, use, we don't use primary for that, okay? But I remember there's one patient of mine, uh, she actually is, um, what to say, uh, she's actually not, not Malaysian. <laughs> And then she does not have a, she does not have this uh, insurance to go for surgery and not even in government also she doesn't have. So her, her consulate failed to like provide her the sufficient funding for surgery. So for us, uh, last time I was in government service, so I give her transamine and then she was continuing on transamine to reduce her menorrhagia. She has a huge fibroid which uh, need to be removed, but uh, somehow we couldn't do it. And then after a few months of transamine, she turned from very dark lady to a very fair lady. True, true. Okay. Because um, in, a lot, in Japan, yeah. they, it's an accidental finding that uh, tranexamic acid actually reduces um, pigmentation. And now it's very commonly used. Even I use yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, there is so a we have a question from uh, Dr. Lim Chuan Leong. Does transamic acid increase risk of DVT? No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't increase the risk of DVT. Yeah, this is one of the fallacies that some, some people, they will say that, oh, you give transamine later will increase uh, this thromboembolic uh, disease. No, it doesn't. Then what is the thing in second and third picture? Uh, this is the modified pack where they put a uh, plastic so that it become watertight. So it means emergency, you don't have time to look for plastic, okay? So you get whatever that you have, which is uh, uh, like, you know, uh, like glove or this thing, and you can use that as a pack. How many <laughs> vials of was... transamine do you use? Usually, uh, depends on the lady's body body weight. Okay, if it's the 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 lady is small size, usually I just give IV five hundred milligram. If the lady is slightly bigger size, I will give IV one gram. Yeah. Okay. So, any I more the question? The middle was uh, the middle thing was a voodoo doll. Uh, no, 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 no. It's uh, almost it's the same thing, just that it's a different, different angle. <laughs> okay. All right. So if no further question, we go to the next uh, reflex. Okay. So I think genital tear sometimes will lead to a lot of nightmare in a lot of junior doctors. Usually these are the things that determine that we don't have uh, junior doctors who are light. Like mostly like you like ONG or you don't like ONG. There's no like in between. And those who don't like, it's like, oh, I don't like to see all the genital tears, all the bleeding. <laughs> I mean, is it true for you guys? I'm not sure, okay? All right. Okay, the next one is a very um, rare, uh, rare, okay? Very rare is uterine inversion. Usually, this uterine inversion is, uh, they say in the literature, is one in a million, okay? If it happened to you, it's one in a million, okay? So the main thing is uh, the reflex is not, to make it happen, okay? It's not like to solve it when it happened, okay? So to make it not happen, what you need to know is mainly, I mean, it's a routine that in every exam they will ask is this control cord traction. You guys know about control cord traction, right? Okay, so yes, usually in multipara, yes, failure of CCT. Sometimes I wouldn't say it's a failure. Sometimes it's a, 
how to say is a misappropriate uh, use of the power okay so you all can see this photo here this is a ccd in progress okay which is a control cord traction okay okay there's a hand that holding the cord okay that i call it hand a all right and the one pushing on the womb is hand b can you guys comment which is an active hand hand a the one on the cord or hand b the one on the womb on the uterus sorry i I'm very used to having layman term is it a or b all right we got team b we got a few of team a one serena is team a the others are team b all right anyone else okay we got one more team a YY T is team A on the womb. Okay, that is a hand B on the uterus B on the uterus B. Okay, so all right. Okay, has the comment reply stop? Okay, somehow it stopped. Okay, so the majority is right. Okay, the active hand is actually the hand B, the hand on the womb. Okay, the uterus. Okay. So a lot of times we tend to pull with the A hand. So when you pull, actually you cause, I mean, higher chance for you trying inversion. So usually what the hand A would do is that you hold the cord in a very taut position. Taut in Malay is tegang. Okay. So once it tegang, you use hand B to push. So when you push with your hand B, you can see that the, the, the placenta will slowly, uh, I mean, break out from the uterus and it does not pull the uterus along and causes inversion. So you can try it, okay? Next time, if you have any, like, you know, the placenta coming out, yes, you, you, when you pull, you, you make it taut, then only the active hand is the B that you press the womb down. So this is how you, uh, make it like separate without pulling out the pulling out the the funders. Sometimes the main thing is not because you are doing it wrong or anything, but sometimes it's really adherent to the funders. And then when you pull too hard with the active hand, I mean the 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 A hand, and then the whole uh funder will together with the placenta will become inverted. Yes, correct. Tan is correct. You look for all the signs of uh, placenta separation. Okay, which is a gush of blood, lengthening of cord. Okay, but the CCT mainly you must remember the active hand is the B hand, the hand on the uterus. Okay, all right. So if let's say you have an inversion of uterus, what do you do? Actually, it's very simple. There's no need for all this palm, hydrostatic, O saliva. No, you just uh, put it back, right? How you reverse your, sorry. Eh? You just put it back, right? Like how you reverse your, like how you like when you have a sock that's turned inside out, you just turn back inside in. So it's like outside in, okay? It means that you go from the side and then you slowly push to the middle and with one hand supporting from the, supporting from the top so that you know that you have pulled, you have, you have pulled in the inverted uterus fully. But if you, if when you have this uh, supporting, I mean, when you have inversion of uterus, and if it's not, uh, not bleeding, it's not really emergency, you can actually, um, you can actually wait for your senior to come first before you do the uh, inversion back. But if you can do it at the same time, you feel that it's not very uh, hard, you can do it yourself, okay? But if you are a house officer, better inform your MO first, and then when the MO is on the way and it's keep on bleeding, then of course you must uh, put in back the inversion. Okay. Okay. We'll get to MRP later, uh, Tan. All right. Okay. Any questions so far before I proceed further? No? All right. Have anyone seen uh, you try inversion? No. Huh? Okay. All right. The same answer. No, right? <laughs> okay. Or oh, that's a positive. Positive means what? You have seen? You try inversion? Jax? Oh, okay. 
So how was it? How do you how do you guys uh, solve this uh, Utrain inversion? Can you share with us? Uh, Jack Stan and Lim Ki Zhen. Yeah. How was it solved the Utrain inversion? Is it you use uh, all this uh, water hydrostatic or you use just manual replacement? What? Sorry, yeah. I've never done ops before. Yeah. Uh, oh, you never done ops before, yeah. Never. Uh, yes, so it's a manual replacement. Is that heavy bleeding or just like okay? So Jack Stan and Lim Kizin have seen a uh, uterine inversion, and then they call help from MO that was manually replaced. Okay, so is it heavy bleeding? It was a disaster. Okay, <laughs> okay. Jack Stan mentioned that it was a disaster. Uh -huh. Okay, how yeah. how was it disaster? Is it like a lot of bleeding or anything like that? Maybe just uh, you can actually uh, unmute if you want to speak. Maybe sometimes it's easier for us. Oh, okay. All right. Mm. I mean, uh, yeah, bleeding around one liter. Okay. So usually the main thing about inversion is that after it's inverted, when it's uh, reverted back, there was a heavy bleeding because um, the uterus is not contracted. And then you don't start any oxytocin first because if you start oxytocin, before you uh, push back the inverted uterus, it's very difficult to invert back. So you must uh, push back first, and then only you start oxytocin, then you start contracting, and then the bleeding will stop. The reason is because when it's inverted, it's become atony and it's hard to stop the bleeding. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, I will go to the next uh, reflex. Is that okay? Yeah. Sorry, yeah, my slide is a bit stuck. Okay, so when you have retained placenta, um, and this is one of my favorite topic actually. So this retained placenta, actually there's two types of retained placenta, all right? The first type is recalled placenta adherence. Adherent meaning that if you can see the picture here, the placenta is adherent to one side of the uterus, which is non-contracted. It's like partial atony of the placenta bed. Okay, this is placenta adherence. Okay, the second one will be trap placenta. Trap placenta meaning that the womb, the uterus, sorry, is contracted fully. All right, but the cervix also contracted. So you can see that the placenta is stuck there. It's like it's contracted, but the cervix disallow the placenta to come out. So there's two types actually, but the most common is placenta adherence, means the placenta bed is not contracted. So what you can do is uh, usually if you put in more oxytocin, then the uterus will contract and the placenta will come out. However, a lot of times the uh, oxytocin doesn't go didn't go to the, the area of the placenta bed. So one of the methods that uh, actually can be used in labor room is uh, what we call this peeping gas uh, technique. Where this peeping gas technique is um, you need to put in a small catheter. The, the exact technique is to put in a small catheter into the cord and then you inject some diluted oxytocin and then you wait for the placenta bed to contract and then the, the placenta will come out. However, uh, if in emergency, usually we don't put in a small catheter, you just um, use a syringe, you, you put into the cord and then you just flush the oxytocin and you just milk the oxytocin into the placenta and then it will contract into the contract in the womb and then the placenta will come out. Okay, provided that you have the cord there and it's very stuck. Okay. And then if it's a trap placenta, actually what you need to do is actually to give something to relax the uterus. Means you need to tocolize. Once you tocolize, the cervix will start to open a bit and then the placenta will come out. It's just, you don't make it contract, you make it relax, okay? Um, well, can Hausman do the peeping, <laughs> piping technique? Okay, uh, it depends on whether uh, you want to do it or not, but actually it's very, usually I will leave it to the MO if it's not really bleeding. But if like emergency, like for instance, your medical officer is in surgery, seizure, uh, 
you will take another half an hour and then and you think that patient uh, the retained placenta is bleeding then you can consider doing this but if it's not it's not urgent like the bleeding is not much the placenta is just stuck you can call the second call medical officer or you can wait for the medical officer to finish the cesarean section first before come to the labor room otherwise you can ask the nurse to get a bit of the you can no the oxytocin is just like the one after deliver you have the 40 unit in one pint that will give to the mother right you can just take from there 10 cc and you to throw on the cord and you just push in and you just milk it in and you just wait yeah there's no how much of oxytocin to be given as long as there's some oxytocin that goes straight to the myometrium that I mean, attached with the placenta, it will come out. Okay, so this is for if you really emergency and you really the MO is not around or you know, okay, when you are alone, let's say you are in district hospital and then you want to send a retained placenta down to <coughs> main hospital like so long, you can try this before you send. Okay, this is one of the technique that I used before, and out of ten times I use nine times it works. And the time that doesn't work, then you have to convert to another one, which is the MRP. Okay. MRP is actually quite simple to use. Okay. Basically, you need to put your hand in, you sweep it in between the womb and the placenta, and you just sweep and you scoop. Okay. And you do a very uh, gentle scooping motion. Okay. The only thing is that you need to put your whole hand in. So you need to wear a very long glove until your elbow. And for those people who uh, did not know you are doing MRP, sometimes it can be quite scary. Like once uh, I'm doing this MRP and there's a cleaner that walked by the labor room that they saw me doing is like, <gasps> they got shocked. Why? Because like, my whole hand is inside. <laughs> you know, it's like imagine my whole hand inside under my arm is at the, at the vagina. So it's like, it looks very gore, okay? Excuse me, even for somebody like me who has never done off. Okay, I'm it's too gore for Betty as well. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> Alright, so I, I shall not let you imagine that in your sleep tonight. It's so scary. Okay, somebody jack Okay, uh, how does it specifically on artery or on the vein? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because the vessel is actually connected to the cord. So you just inject and you just uh, push it in. Do you give analgesic while doing MRP? Um, well, you can give uh, analgesic before you do it, but usually uh, it won't be that painful if you do it uh, gently. Uh, okay. <laughs> yep. uh, injecting 10 cc. Okay, I'll that, I answered that question already. Any other question before I move on? Okay, so no question. All right. So I move on to the next one. All right. So now we go to the baby, okay? So baby actually, basically, you need to attend the course called NRP, Neonatal Resuscitation Program, okay? But these are the few tips that I, I usually do that without knowingly, okay? First thing is like when you cut the cord, let's say the baby is, what is the thing that you look for when you have the baby deliver? There are two main things I need to look for. What are the two main things? Can you guys answer? Can you guys, I uh, mean, uh, guess what are the two things that you look at the baby? Cry, tone, okay, abgar score. Abgar score is more than two, really. Okay, tone and cry, okay. Basically, tone uh, similar to cry, okay. All right. So you can, like I say, there's no right or wrong answer, okay. So the main thing that I look for is usually the color and the tone, these two things, okay. It is worse prognosis if the color is white, pale. Okay? It's worse prognosis if the tone is poor. So if it's pale and poor tone, then the baby is not doing well. Okay? So when baby wants delivered, you quickly look at the baby. And then when you need to cut the cord, you actually can feel the pulse. So when you're feeling the pulse, you can see the hand when you're cutting the cord, you're holding the cord, right? You don't like, oh, okay, nurse, you hold the cord for me, I cut. <laughs> like, like going to like, like cut the ribbon for opening a shop or what, no, right? You need to hold your cord yourself and then you cut, okay? So when you hold it, you feel the pulse. Is the pulse 
fast or slow. If it's slow, means that the heart rate is poor. So when the heart rate are poor, you know that you must quickly resuscitate the baby. Okay, so so you need to stimulate first. You need to stimulate the baby first. So is this the way you stimulate the baby? You hold the baby leg and you slap on the buttock. Yes or no? No, no. Okay. Anyone saying yes or not? No, ah. Uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> so we got very good. All right. So this is not the way. Okay. This is the advert advertisement last time. Okay. All right. So the correct way is to actually not to slap on the on the chest. Okay. It's on the back. Okay. I, I, I don't know why the picture here is on the front. And then you can also uh, tap tap on the, the sole of the foot of the baby to stimulate and dry and warm. Okay. These are what we call as uh, initial steps. So a lot of times you can see pits, they will say, okay, in initial steps done. So what are the initial steps? They are stimulation, dry, warm the baby, okay? So after you stimulate, you can see what is the baby heart rate. If its heart rate is poor, you must quickly stimulate and then you, you back the baby, okay? Back and mass, okay? So this one better, the, the best thing is that you need to you must make sure this back and mask have a uh, oxygen flow. Okay, some people they, they have no oxygen flow and they go and back and then there's not much oxygen going in. Okay, and then the main thing is you hold the the mask on the baby's uh the 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 nose and the mouth and then you start begging. Okay, all right. But if you cannot do this, you don't do first. The main thing is the first treating, which is the stimulate. Okay. And then you must know when to ask for help, okay? So once the baby come out, if it's dark blue, the tone is okay, but just not really responsive, you can try stimulate first. You don't need to call for help. But if let's say it's uh, pale and tone is poor, quickly, quickly uh, ask for help, okay? All right. Uh, yeah. Yes. It, Sorry. Just, just by patting the baby on the back, or let's say on the what can really stimulate the baby. Again, what is the question? If you just really by pat, patting the baby, the baby from the back or from the the, the foot, yeah. So you yes. mean you can really stimulate the baby? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. is it a reflex? Uh no no, it's not a reflex. It's just an initial step that you do to stimulate the baby so that it will. It will like uh how to say it? sometimes when the baby come out it will be a bit poor response or this thing. So when you stimulate, the first step you must do is this rub the bag, dry, warm, and stimulate. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then don't panic. <laughs> I don't okay. panic easily, but I didn't really All right. stimulate. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So okay. So if you want the complete one, you must go to join the NRP, the neonatal resuscitation program. Then you can learn more about the uh, resuscitation of this baby okay but the initial one you must know is this tree okay because most of the nurses they know this if they are going for midwifery okay so the doctors you should know okay all right the next one would be uh bridge so bridge basically a baby when delivering there's three diameter by parietal by acromial and by trochanteric means that your head the baby's head, sorry, your shoulder and your hip bone. These three, these three diameter are the large one. Okay. So when you have a bridge delivery, means that the head will come last. And usually the bright brighter is the one that's largest. That's why when you have I mean cephalic delivery means your head come first, baby come first, head come first, it's easier because the other diameters are smaller. But when you have bridge, when you have bridge delivery, the leg, baby leg come out the hip come out, the shoulder come out, but then the, if the cervix got contracted like the trap placenta, then the baby head cannot come out. So when it cannot come out, what can you do actually? You must release the cervix, okay? How you release the cervix? We call this a dorsal incision, okay? Can you see here? This is the, this is a baby, the hand here, the body, and then the head is stuck. So this is the cervix. So to release, the baby head, you do the dorsal incision, okay? So basically, you cut on the cervix so that the baby head can come out, okay? And then where do you cut? Can you see here in this second picture? 
the vessels of the cervix is at the three and nine o'clock. So you just avoid any area of three and nine. So one of the most recommended are uh, from the side here around one and two, because in the 12th, sometimes it's anterior, sometimes it's near to the bladder. If you cut wrongly or you overcut, you may cut on the vagina and then hit the bladder, but usually you won't, okay? Because you protect it and you just make a very small incision to release the baby's head. And then this one is uh, bridge delivery is very, uh, now nowadays a bit more uncommon because most bridge baby, they will go for cesarean section, okay? Unless uh, some center, they are still like, you know, more proponent of bridge delivery, then you must be aware. Because when you have bridge delivery, the head is stuck there, it's almost the same as shoulder dystocia because head stuck, they cannot, there will be no oxygen. So by four minutes, you must start to do an action. So if your MO is in an operation theater or in even in cleaning to run out, also it takes more than five to 10 minutes, okay? Uh, it seems very easily to cut wrongly doctor or client. Actually, it's not that difficult to see because when the baby head is already there, you can see there's one ring around the head, which is... Uh, contracting and then difficult to, I would say the, the head just need to go through that, that, that cervical ring and you just have to make a very small nick to release it. Yep. Okay. So far I've done once, uh, I've done once. Okay. Uh, very rare we have this kind of uh, situation. Uh, it's at the cervix, uh, near one to two o'clock, you avoid the three to nine o'clock. Okay. Uh, one, okay, I'll type in the comment section, one to two o'clock, all right? Avoid the three, the three and the nine o'clock, okay? All right, so the main thing is also we want to prevent this from happening. How to prevent is you ask the mother not to push when the os is not full yet, meaning that if the mother have mother want to come and deliver bridge delivery, if the os is still uh, 8 cm, 9 cm, she's having very strong contraction, especially those multi-para means that they have delivered a lot of baby before. When they have contraction, they say, oh, I want to push, I want to push the baby out because I couldn't stand the pain. But you must tell the mom, the, mo the mother, your os is not open yet, you don't, you don't push first, wait for the cervix to fully dilated, then you can avoid this this problem of we call this trap head in the bridge delivery. Okay, question from Anna Karina. Do we give local anesthesia before the incision? No. Okay, because the cervix has no uh, pain receptor, so there's no need to give any uh, anesthesia and it's an emergency. You cannot wait until you get the anesthesia and put in and then you cut, all right? The way to cut, is it the same from Fiona Shao? The way to cut, is it like the same how we do episiotomy, cutting during the contraction? Um, actually, when the baby come out fully and then um, the cervix is just there, you don't wait for the contraction. Uh, is it the same like how we episode? Yes, you. the main thing, you must protect the baby head and then you cut on the cervix. But it's a very small cut, unlike the episiotomy when you do a very big cut, right? This one is just a small nick so that you just release the cervix and the baby head can come out, all right? And then you must tell your MO you have cut and let the MO repair the cervix, okay? Don't just cut then, oh, okay, the baby's out, then you forgot about the cut. And the, <laughs> the mom start to have uh, bleeding from the cervical incision that you made, okay? All right? Yes, yes, you need to suture it back. <laughs> it won't miraculously patch back. Huh? That will only happen in cartoons, okay? Like I said, uh, you can do it if it's really, really emergency, okay? But of course, when your MO is just nearby you at the counter, please call your MO, <laughs> okay? It's like where, it's how, this is why I say that it's a reflex that you can do, just that you need to see the situation. For instance, if your MO is just in the counter, you're in labor room, you just ask for help, bridge uh, start. And usually bridge delivery, your, your house officer is not supposed to do it independently. Usually bridge delivery should be done by at least the uh, junior medical officer or slightly senior medical officer, all right? So you can do this cut 
if it's really urgent and your senior is not around. So that one, what I mentioned is that this is a reflex that you need to do if let's say you couldn't get help, okay? You couldn't get help or the help you think would be very far away, all right? For instance, you have a bridge delivery in a district hospital. Your general hospital is like one hour away. Takana, you want to stand the mother with a stuck baby head there to all one away to the general hospital. By the time you reach there, the baby won't survive, okay? So you must do the cut, deliver the baby, okay? All right. Okay, so the bridge delivery, all these things you can get from the book. <laughs> That's very routine, everything, okay? I'm not going to go over that, all right? Okay, the next one will be a very run of the mill. Uh, every uh, assessment will have this uh, core prolapse. But for, I mean, the core prolapse, the main thing that I learned so far, I mean, from my experience, is uh, you just need to lift up the butt. Okay, all right. When you see this one, the first picture, uh, the, the lady, okay, you just assume she's pregnant, okay. I tried to find a photo for this. Uh, but leave uh, for core prolapse, but I couldn't find any. So I find this yoga photo and I just draw below be below it. Okay. So basically, if you have a core prolapse at any point of time, the main thing that you first you must do is to put a pillow below the butt. Okay. Because when you put a pillow below the butt, you can see that the cord actually, the, the baby actually fall back to the, I mean, fall fall to the top, okay, and then it release, I mean, it loosen out the cord compression, okay, and then you can see if the, there's no imminent delivery, you go for scissor, okay, so all these things that uh, you don't take out your hand or you just leave it there, there's one of the things that you can do, which is you leave your hand there, but the main thing is you lift up the butt, okay, put the pillow there or put a blanket, anything, and then uh, Okay, bring the mother to Caesar. Okay, is that what happened to, to you guys when you have the cop prolapse? Do you do this, the buttock lifting? Just now there's a, someone who told me that you have this cop prolapse, right? Is it Fiona? Ah, Serena, yes, Serena, okay. And then some people will say that you put in the CBD, you inflate the bladder, all these things. All this thing will take time, okay? But the only reflex that is beneficial is to put the put the buttock up. So when you think of coprolapse, coprolapse, put the buttock up. Coprolapse, put the buttock up. Sometimes I even teach the patient. It's like some patient they have a preterm possible risk of preterm delivery, baby in transverse or bridge. I will tell them, um, just in case you go into labor, you have uh, leaking you must quickly lie down in your car and put a pillow below your butt. So you can see that it's very simple thing that you can do. Ask them not to sit upright, I mean to sleep, I mean to lie down and put a pillow below the butt. So, cup prolapse, butt lift, and then arrange for cesarean section. Okay, all right. Of course, you must check the baby heartbeat, okay? All this thing is in the book, okay? If the heartbeat is not there, then there's no need for cesarean section, okay? All right, so I'll go to the, is the last, okay, the last one, okay. So the last one is shoulder dystocia, also one of the meal that every doctor should know. So when you have shoulder dystocia, the main two things that will relieve the dystocia 90% of time is the McRobert and the suprapuric pressure, okay. So a lot of people, they would think that, okay, McRobert, McRobert. So sometimes when you say McRobert, it's a word, it's a big word, okay, it's a name. A lot of people, I mean, if you're a doctor, you should know Mary Robert, but let's say you're in a ward with a junior or maybe medical student, I mean, or not medical student, I mean, a nursing student, sometimes they don't know, is it Mary Robert? Then to them, it's like, uh, apart to Mary Robert, much more about Mary Robert. <laughs> so like, they don't know what is really, what is Mary Robert. So the simple term that you must use is put the mother's knee to the chest. That is Mary Robert. Okay, so when you put the Merobert position where the mother, okay, you can see this picture, actually the mother hold the thigh, not so simple, okay. Usually when the mother, the head is there, the mother have no energy to put the hand on the thigh, okay. So you need two assistants, if you can to push the, the mother's knee, mother's knee to the, her chest, 
okay? And when you put her in this McRobert position, the hip actually, the suprapubic bone actually comes out and the bigger diameter, okay? Shoulder dystocia mainly is that the shoulder is stuck. If you can see the photo here, the shoulder is stuck behind the suprapubic bone. So what you need to do is two things. Lift up the bone or you push the shoulder down or you do both. Do both means that you do McRobert when you lift up the suprapubic bone and then you do the suprapubic pressure. The pressure is not just pushing down. You must see where the baby is facing, okay? For instance, if I face here, so the pressure must push down and towards where I'm facing. You're basically making the baby crouch, okay, crouch. If the baby is facing here, you push down but go there, the baby is opening the shoulder, it become wider, then the baby cannot come out. So the, the reflex is that you when you push, you must quickly see where is the baby facing. If the baby is facing to the left, you must push down and push towards the left side. So dystocia, shoulder dystocia, main thing is knee to chest, push where the baby is facing. All right. So this is the two main reflex that you will release almost 90% of the uh, shoulder dystocia, okay? Have you guys encountered shoulder dystocia before? Yes or no? Yes? Wow, a lot of people. <laughs> okay. So usually, yeah, this is the, the run of the male thing that you will have, okay? And it's very unpredictable, not just big baby. Sometimes small baby also can have dystocia. Wow, Fiona Shaw said yes, and it's followed by PPH, okay? What is the reason for PPH? Fiona, would you like to share with us? Okay, we wait for Fiona's comment. While we're waiting for wow. Fiona's comment, what, what is PPH? Yeah. So PPH is a uh, postpartum hemorrhage, mainly oh. like a uh, heavy bleeding. Oh, you trying atony? Okay, so so this one is a uh, atony. So it's unrelated to dystocia. Okay, mainly the dystocia is the stuck shoulder, and you need to release the shoulder. And the atony is maybe the womb itself just wouldn't contract. Okay, yeah. So sometimes it's a combination of emergency. So there's a few reflex that you need to know. Okay. All right. Okay, I think this is the last reflex that you need to know. Okay, you guys have any question about this? Uh, this reflex that you need to know. Mainly, you must keep it very simple. Okay, if we emergency, you must memorize. My Robert can is for exam purposes, but for real life, knee to chest. Okay, even if like me, if I know that my midwife are very experienced, I will just say knee to chest, so that. Uh, it's very simple and then even you wake up 3 a.m. Oh, so I need to social. Knee to chest. You know what is knee, you know what is chest. <laughs> when I said my Robert, some people say, oh, my Robert. Suddenly they couldn't click, you know. All right. So make it very simple. Okay. Jack Stan asks if my Robert and super pubic pressure fail to deliver baby, any other maneuver or there is a lot of other maneuver. Okay. So the next one that I would go in line to use is to, to deliver the posterior shoulder. Means that you can see this uh, photo here in the photo B. After you have put fabric pressure, this hand is already down, but this hand is not out yet. So you can slip your hand below the baby head and lift up the posterior hand. So you can see if I, sorry, uh, because I'm using a screen. So if you, if you push the shoulder side and you lift up another hand, the diameter becomes smaller. So it's easier to deliver. So this is one of the tricks of delivering the posterior shoulder. And then you can actually, you don't need to be so afraid. Some of the baby, their, their joints all are very flexible. And even if you just pull a bit, they will just go back by itself and they will heal very well. A lot of times, people don't dare to do a lot of maneuver because they were scared. They were saying that, oh no, later the baby hand breaks, how this thing, okay. But you must understand, dystocia meaning that the head is out, but the shoulder couldn't come out. If too long, the lead to asphyxia and the baby may head, 
uh, this cerebral palsy and hypoxic ischemic and encephalopathy. All right. So I mean. You must go by what you need to do, okay? If you think that you can have some time to get your senior, you get your senior, okay? Do you mind repeating the part of lifting another limb again? Ah, can. All right. So basically, can you see the arrow on the on my screen? Can you see the arrow? All right. So here is where you put the suprapubic pressure and then your hand, another hand, after you're doing the episiotomy, you go from the back and you can feel the baby's, uh, this axilla. Uh, then you scoop the baby's hand and lift it out. Means you scoop this hand and you lift it out from, from the vagina. Then you can see that once you lift one hand out of the, the uterus, you can see the whole diameter becomes smaller. Can you imagine like first, okay, I go a bit further. First, you make it like this. So the, the diameter is still big. So when I hook up this hand, it becomes even smaller. Then the baby can come out easier. Mainly is the, yeah, you will make the 180 turn. Sometimes the baby doesn't turn, but your main thing is to make the diameter small, your shoulder, shoulder small. Okay. Episiotomy usually needed, okay, because if you don't do episiotomy, the vagina is sometimes very small, it couldn't go in. So you need a better view, so you do the episiotomy. But be careful because the baby's uh, head is there, all right? So you need, you must really protect the head and do the episiotomy. Okay, so, oh, ho, 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 okay, all right. <laughs> okay, okay, Kai is very happy with the answer. Okay, you are welcome, you are welcome, all right. Okay, so, all right. Any more questions about this uh, dystocia? Mainly, you don't need to worry about all this posterior uh, thing. I think for, my, for me, for my experience, usually these two will just sort out a lot of uh, this dystocia. And then if you really doesn't know these two, then um, yeah, <laughs> you, you need to learn it up. Okay, all right. Okay, so if no further question, I go and all four position or that one you can do that one also but i would just recommend you learn these two and the all four maybe later all four will be just like uh the this one okay this is all four means you put the mothers in the sort of like uh, backward position and from here you deliver so this one is the same you deliver the posterior shoulder first because posterior there's no obstruction from the suprapubic bone all, all the method that you use, you must understand how it functions. Then you know whether you're doing it correctly or not. A lot of times you just follow my Robert, uh, super baby pressure, but what does it do? We don't know. This is super baby pressure. You must make sure you press to the direction of where the baby face is facing. Uh, you must know the you must know the, the reason behind it. Okay, another question is how do we do episiotomy, doctor? Any specific location? Episiotomy would be the mediolateral, the one, uh, any, I mean, mediolateral, usually I would do on the left, uh, right, right mediolateral. So if let's say this is the, let's say this is the vagina, and then I would just cut to the uh, six, seven, eight, around seven, eight o'clock. MLO meaning what? Huh? Or oh, you want to type Milo? You are hungry, is it? <laughs> uh, or oh, you want to blanja me, Milo? <laughs> what is MLO? Huh? Oh, okay. Haha. -ha. So it's not Milo, okay. Alright. Me or is it middle, low, or something? <laughs> Alright. Okay, wait for Sophia Shikin to define us what is MLO. Medial lateral oblique. Ah, medial lateral oblique. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, that's very cool term. Medial lateral oblique. Okay, oh, correct. For the episode, okay, oh, another tips about cutting this MLO is uh okay, I will say seven eight o'clock. Okay, easier using the clock. Okay, sometimes you use two bombastic word, you are just like you know, uh, too doctorish, <laughs> a bit snobbish. All right, but okay. But you need to know the term if you are with a doctor, so of course, uh, your senior giving assessment or thing. 
So usually when you cut, you don't just really cut oblique, you go slightly higher a bit. All right, better to be around eight o'clock. Because when you see when the vagina wall is being stretched, you cut eight o'clock. When it's unstretched, you go down to seven o'clock. Okay. So if you cut seven o'clock, you will go more towards six. So then the tear will go down more to the anus. So one of the tips is you cut more towards uh eight o'clock. Okay. The Sophia I can share the Milo, huh? Cut the medial lateral oblique. Okay. All right. So okay. So can we move on? All right. Any more question? Okay, there's an emoticon there. I couldn't see well, very small. It's supposed yeah. to be a ghost, is it? Or is it a crying <laughs> ghost? Sorry, yeah. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry. Okay. So all right. So in a nutshell, not really a nut, a big coconut shell. So here are the all the reflex that you need to know. Okay, first thing is uh, all the patient ask for help. Okay. If it's atony, you massage. If the mom is collapsed, you left tube, do ABC. Genital test, you pack, do a anchoring suture. Inversion, you put in back, outside in. If you retain placenta, you can try to fit the cord or then not, you do the MRP strip and separate. If it's a flat baby or atony, you stimulate back and mass. Bridge, you cut the cervix, not at three and nine o'clock. Cord prolapse, you lift the buttock up. Okay, and then prepare for cesarean section. And if you should to see knee to chest and push the shoulder down, which is the suprapubic pressure. So all these things, if possible, if you are still junior or very new, you can try to imagine one by one what happened and what you need to do, what happened, what you need to do. So when you imagine it every day, then you got mental, mental preparation so that whenever it happens, to you, it's like a bit natural, you know already what to do. And of course, you must ask for help. And then when the help is there, you ask for help. <laughs> you don't be a hero, okay? Just like what I mentioned the first slide, you don't be a hero, okay? First rule of medicine is what? Don't be a hero. No, no, actually the second rule, okay? The first rule is your boss is always right. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so... So you listen to your senior, ah, yes, don't know how, okay? And then don't be a hero, okay? Always ask for help, all right? Always, always ask for help, okay? All right, okay. Any other question that you guys want to ask? Any burning question? Ask now or forever hold your silence. Okay, I'm joking, I'm joking. You can ask your other senior as well, okay? If you have any question you want to ask me secretly so that no one else knows <laughs> you can dm me at my uh, instagram at kaini pinang uh, but you'll be charged i know la, you i won't charge you la, okay all right <laughs> okay and then okay. if you want very comprehensive details you can actually go to uh, one of the website uh, society we have which is uh, ogsm okay ogsm is not orgasm okay ogsm is <laughs> Of Satri and Kaini Society Malaysia. All right. Okay. ICOE is for our obstetric emergency. Okay. Intensive course in uh, obstetric emergency ICOE. So you can Google OGSM ICOE. Okay. To get to the website and you can maybe join us in the course and you can train better. Okay. All right. Thank you everyone for listening to me. <laughs> Okay, um, just try to share a bit of my experience, okay? Not really a very good sifu or what, and so learn from everyone, okay? All right? So, yeah, these are the few small, small reflex that you all can learn up, okay? That, yeah, in case of really emergency that you are alone, yeah, then you'll be used to, okay? All right, so... Okay, yeah, it's a revision as well, okay? You must keep revising, okay? For me, I'm so revising every day, <laughs> okay? Because sometimes, uh, hopefully, not all emergency come to me, but when it happened to me, it's like, oh, the good old times. <laughs> I, I had a cop prolapse uh, last month. <laughs> last month, actually, she's uh, 
wife of a doctor as well. Oh my god. So the, the doctor is like, so the doctor is like uh the doctor is the MO as well, like, uh what to do? Uh? <laughs> it's like a bit panicked, you know, it's okay, just lift the buttock up, go for scissor, then the baby come out crying very nicely. Oh, no other so problem. Nice. Okay. okay Okay. All right. I think, uh, so yeah, thank you everyone. Have... Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're all welcome. Let me just uh, say a few words before we go. Thank can, you can. very much, Papin. Um, yep. I am so happy today that yes. uh, the the um interaction with this uh, our our viewers was fantastic. They have never been so responsive. Uh, in any of our talks before, so I'm very, very happy for that. Um, I'm also very happy that um, many of them seem to be already in practicing, um, means they are already in practice either as a house officer or a, as a doctor. And I'm uh, pleased to say that Beating Hearts has already submitted again to MMA um, to award CPD points. So hopefully that will be approved so that in the future we will actually have um can award all of you CPD points when they come into our webinar. Uh another thing is that um yes, it is very difficult to um be very confident uh during an emergency. It comes with practice, it comes with experience. Uh, some people are better than others. Confidence is good, but never be overconfident. Um, and again, uh, Dr. Law, Law has said that practice in your mind when you don't yeah. have the cases. That is extremely, extremely useful. I do it all the time. I do it for preparation for um, interviews, for vivas, for emergencies. I imagine scenarios in my mind all the time. It might not be exactly the same, but it helps. And the other thing I would like to say is that, uh, thank God there are not many emergencies, and yes, we don't pray for it, but always, always be observant of others, other people's mistakes. Means what they do, just don't judge, but what they do, always learn. So when be observant of everybody, means, other MOs, other house officers, see how they handle situation and learn from it. Learn from it. So with that, I think um, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, next week we have uh, another topic: emergency in diabetes, diabetic emergency, uh, by an endocrinology. And um, have a nice week ahead. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy Thank you. Year. Thank you.